in America's heartland. Hi, I'm Paul Ryan, and welcome to America's Heartland. It's a crop that dates back to ancient China. You'll find it in margarine, salad oil, all sorts of edible products. Soybeans, it's America's third largest crop, but it's not just for the dinner table. We begin this edition of America's Heartland here in Iowa, where Jason Schultz discovered that soybeans are now being transformed into an important fuel source. It's an 11 million acre carpet. Since back in the 50s, they were growing soybeans here in this area. That covers the gentle rolling hills of the Iowa landscape. It's a crop that over time has proven to be a driving factor in Iowa's agricultural economy. And for farmers like Scott Chestnut, a foundation for the future. If you look at uh, food products, ingredients today, almost all of them have some soy product or byproduct in them. From oils to animal feed, researchers have found ways to get more uses out of the soybean. And the latest is fueling big hopes for the future. Biodiesel fuel made from soybeans. We've started uh, using biodiesel in all of our equipment in 1996, and we have used it uh, continually. Farmers have been on the cutting edge of this renewable fuel technology for several years, combining petroleum-based diesel fuel with fuel made from animal fat or plant oils. It started out just uh, to being used uh, by farmers in their tractors, uh, combines, and in their trucks, and uh, now it's been uh, accepted uh, a lot more widely. One of the largest biodiesel producers is actually in the small town of Ralston, Iowa, population 100. Farmers bring their soybeans straight from the field here to the West Central Co-op, and every year they make about 12 million gallons of biodiesel fuel. Flowing through a maze of stainless steel pipes and tanks, the oil from crushed soybeans is combined with methanol. That chemical reaction produces biodiesel fuel along with glycerin and fatty acid byproducts. Niall Ramsbottom is in charge of West Central's biodiesel division. We reclaim all the excess methanol. We, re we reuse the wash water uh, for the most part, so it's very clean, very environmentally friendly and because of that, it's also low cost. In fact, the wastewater gets used by a local farmer on his crops. The West Central plant is one of less than a dozen around the country producing biodiesel, but this new fuel is growing in popularity. We have uh, more demand than we have supply at this point in time, and so our, our goal is to build plants for people and get more production and so we can get more customers on biodiesel. Rail cars loaded with soy-based fuel go out to distributors across the country. Dozens of biodiesel distributors and retailers now sell this formulated fuel. They blend the 100% biodiesel with petroleum-based diesel fuel. There's uh, no need for modifying the engines, uh, no need for special mechanics. Uh, it can just be used as a direct substitute for diesel fuel. After finding acceptance for the fuel in other large vehicle fleets, biodiesel producers are now targeting truck drivers. Many truck stops are now selling diesel blended with 2% biodiesel. I'm a big believer in it. I think it could save our nation and give us, get, get us away from the Middle East, you know, and away from fossil fuels in general. But even as Paul Anderson supports the fuel, he's not buying it. In fact, at this Central Iowa gas station, only about 100 gallons are sold a day. For most truckers, fuel buying decisions are made by the companies that they work for, and biodiesel costs a few cents more a gallon at the pump than 100% diesel. Fuel's killing us right now as it is, but maybe as more biodiesel plants come online in the future and it becomes more readily available, maybe the price will come down. Biodiesel producers say the long-term benefits outweigh the costs. Testing by the Environmental Protection Agency found that biodiesel burns cleaner than petroleum-based fuel, reducing hydrocarbons and sulfur exhaust. The smoke, instead of being black, turns white. Uh, you can noticeably smell it. Kind of classic joke is it smells like french fries. A 2005 study by professors at Cornell and the University of California is highly critical of biodiesel. 
It found that growing the soybeans and formulating the fuel expends more energy than biodiesel produces. But a 1998 study by the Energy Department and the USDA reached the opposite conclusion. It found that biodiesel delivers three times the amount of energy it takes to produce it. We're looking for ways to improve our economy here. We're trying to reduce our reliance on foreign oil. Uh, here's a renewable product that we can grow right here in the United States. We can grow it every year. The fuels producers admit there are not enough soybeans or animal fat to replace the 55 billion gallons of diesel fuel used in the U.S. every year. But as Americans pay more attention to the cost of petroleum, farmers see a future renewable energy source in the rich soil of the heartland. In 1940, 